sure, I may not be the world's definition of what success looks like, you know, making millions of dollars. Hey everybody, I'm Amber, a disabled gal, here to reveal or remind you that you're complete in Jesus Christ alone. Today I'm just going to be sharing a snippet of my testimony and hope that it blesses those who hear. I was born with a genetic disease called spinal muscular atrophy, type 2. Essentially, my muscles don't hear the signal from my brain that should be traveling through my spinal cord. They don't hear those messages properly. So after not using muscles, the muscles start to atrophy or waste away. And this causes a lot of secondary problems. I personally am not a fan of terms like differently abled or special abilities or euphemisms like that. We should just call it what it is, a disability. Some things deserve stigma, but disability is not one of them. God put my soul into a body that happens to have a disability. My body happens to be limited in a lot of ways. I don't want to give the perception that I can do nothing, but the reality is there's just a lot of things I simply cannot do independently or that I need medical equipment to do. I want to read a verse here. In context, Paul is speaking out against sexual immorality, but I think this is applicable even beyond that. So 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 19 and 20 says, Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. Something it doesn't go on to say, it doesn't give the exclusion of, well, if you have a disability, your body's no longer a temple and you can't glorify God with your body. It's just not possible. The verse doesn't say that. <laughs> this applies to everybody. Everybody can glorify God with their body, no matter what limitations it may have. Personally, in my life, sure, I may not be the world's definition of what success looks like, you know, making millions of dollars, because <laughs> uh, that's earthly success. I may not have that, but I still glorify God with my body. The house of my spirit, my body, my temple, is still a vessel for the Lord, for His glory. One example is my husband Devin and I have a YouTube channel that we're trying to grow, and uh, on this channel we talk a lot about the gospel, um, we talk about the theology of disability and equipping the church. Uh, to know how to handle disability, things like that. So the Lord can use limitations for His glory. Also, on a spiritual note, my dependence on others has really taught me my dependence upon the Lord. And really, all of us, whether we have an obvious disability or not, we depend on each other. But when you have a disability like mine, it really humbles you in a way and makes you realize that, you know, you simply need help. And over the years, this has taught me how much I need God. I need God for salvation. I can't save myself, and none of us can, and we should find our salvation in Christ. He's the only one who can take away our sins. He's the only one that could be that spotless lamb. Not only does God use my limitations to teach myself things, but I also think he uses limitations to test others. I think this is most obviously seen at the end of Matthew chapter 25. I don't have time to read that whole section, but you can go check that out for yourself. Also, just the very intimate nature of caregiving gives space for conversations to happen. I've even shared the gospel with random, you know, women that were helping me. 
even with my husband, caregiving just gives us a level of deepness in our marriage that I just, it would be so different without it. Not that I think marriages without caregiving are somehow bad, but the caregiving in our marriage just really gives him another opportunity to be a representation of Christ and the church with me in our marriage. Thank you all so much for watching. Please comment below any thoughts, topic ideas, or any of that. And thanks again. The video you just saw was made by Fallible Christians. Although we diligently seek to represent the God of the Bible accurately, please understand that we are still being sanctified. For absolute truth, please refer to the Bible.